my relationship with Guruji, that fateful day when I met Guruji, has made such a tremendous impact on my life. But I, so I met Gurji. I remember it was, uh, I think it was April of 2009. I was sitting in my office and I received a phone call from my good friends, Chris and Janet Atwood. Chris and Janet Atwood, uh, were authors of a, a New York Times bestselling book called The Passion Test. And they had invited me to write, um, uh, Passion Test for Business with them. I was very honored to do that. And uh, I was scheduled to go to their home. Uh, in Fairfield, Iowa. I lived in Evanston, Illinois at the time, just outside of Chicago. I was scheduled to go to work with them at their home in Fairfield, Iowa, which is about five hours away. And that day they called me and asked me uh, if I would like to join them in Iowa City, which is about four hours from me, an hour from them, to meet someone named Guruji. Now, um, I immediately said no. And not because I wasn't spiritual at the time. Uh, As a matter of fact, on the contrary, I've been involved all of my life since college, which is many, many years ago, in uh, spiritual pursuits. I'm a teacher of transcendental meditation. I was the regional director of the uh, New England uh, region for the TM organization. I helped build the TM community. And through my many years, I've traveled to India many times, met many sages and seers and gurus, and had the pleasure of being able to host many of them in our home in, in Chicago. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Sai Ma, Sri Ma, um, Cielo, the Buddhist monk, uh, and many, many others, Byron Katie. And uh, it was great honor to be able to do so. But I was at a point in my life where I pretty much thought that I knew everything. It was I was suffering from um, spiritual arrogance, spiritual malaise. So when um, Chris and Janet asked me to meet yet another Guruji, I had absolutely no interest whatsoever because I envisioned going to a room with uh, people in colorful Indian garb, sitting on the floor, cross-legged, listening to someone expound things that I already thought I knew uh, and recommending practices that I knew that I would never do. But reluctantly, I said, because they were friends of mine, that I would, in fact, join them in Iowa City to meet this man called Guruji. Um, An interesting thing happened. I, I was at a point in my life where... I was not just in a spiritual malaise or rut, but I think in my life I was kind of in a rut as well. And I was asking myself, what's next for me? What am I doing here? My marriage wasn't particularly happy. I wasn't flourishing in business as I had for many, many years before. And it was kind of a, an identity crisis. And I left my home thinking, how did I get here in this place where I was emotionally and spiritually? An interesting thing happened in the four-hour four drive to Iowa City. As I drove further and further and came closer and closer to this meeting that I wasn't looking forward to, I found my spirits being lifted. I, I started to all feel better. And when I walked in the room, the meeting place, I had gone, traveled from feeling pretty bad about myself to feeling great and that the world was my oyster and there was all possibilities in front of me. And then I walked in the room. And it wasn't a huge room. It wasn't a, a, a ballroom with hundreds of people. In fact, it was the back of a coffee house. It was a very small meeting room. And there was a little wooden table. And there were, in fact, people in colorful Indian garb. And that was my two friends, Janet and Chris. And sitting around the table, there were three or four other gentlemen in dark suits. Um, where in, at the head of the table, there was another man, one man, particular man, a dark suit wearing dark glasses. I thought, my goodness, what is this? This seemed more like the Indian mafia had come. And I thought we maybe were in trouble. But uh, I sat down next to my friends and I just listened. And uh, to say that I was astonished would be an understatement. Because uh, at that meeting, um, oh, did I mention the head of the table was Guruji? He was the man with the dark glasses. <clears throat> and I heard... Uh, things I'd never heard before. They had a computer with them. There was a doctor there and there was a trustee of a university there. And they were telling me, oh, and the reason, by the way, they had called this meeting is because they had actually been on the internet and Janet had had done a video series called 
gee, I can't remember, something about, she had trekked through the Himalayas and had interviewed many gurus in, throughout the Himalayas. And they had contacted Janet because they wanted to found, find out if Janet had ever experienced anything like Mahindra Trivedi. Anyway, I heard at that time things that you probably already know. It's all new to me. <clears throat> I heard about with, uh, with his energy transmissions, his blessings, uh, Gurji could transform crops. He could increase the yield of crops by 300%, increase their immunity disease by up to 600%. He could reduce, he had been able in, uh, in vitro studies, been able to reduce the viral load of HIV virus, of hepatitis C, of uh, cytomegalovirus. I heard how uh, he could kill cancer cells while um, uh, improving the efficacy and viability of healthy cells, all with one blessing. And I heard stories recounted from the people around the table how Gurji had transformed their lives personally. One man's wife had been in a terrible accident, and through Gurji's blessings, she recovered fully. And I heard about how their relationship had improved so much, and many, many other stories. Now, with all the wonderful people I've seen and encountered in my life, uh, I have so much gratitude and respect for so many of them. I had never in my life heard anything like what I heard that day. It was astonishing. I've never heard of anything in all my readings and studies. I'd never heard of anybody who could do the things that Gurji had already done. I also heard how his physiology was so unique as well and saw pictures of it too. Um, and then we spent a number of hours together talking and it was really, and, uh, and uh, before uh, leaving, Jen and Chris asked if we could get his blessings to actually experience it. Now, Jen and Chris lived in Iowa and they probably wouldn't be seeing Gurji for some time. And I discovered in that meeting that Gurji was actually staying in Chicago, not far from where I was living. And it was getting late, so he had consented to give Jen and Chris blessings. I had to wait. We said we'd get together in Chicago and do it some other time. And I was a bit disappointed, but driving that extra hour back to Fairfield from our meeting in Iowa City, I noticed that my spirits were elevated. I felt incredible just by being with Gurji, the energy that was being transmitted just through his presence, through his being. And I, I drove to Jen and Chris's house and I slept like I'd never remembered sleeping before. Um, the bed, I woke up the next morning and it was like, I, the bed, it was almost like I wasn't sleeping there. I didn't toss and turn. The bed was almost not made, except for the fact there was a little impression when I was sleeping there. The next day, we had an incredible creative business section, accomplished more in one day than I would have imagined we would have, uh, would have accomplished in a week. And I realized, not only from a scientific empirical standpoint, from, but from a subjective standpoint, something real was happening. I was experiencing something that I hadn't experienced anywhere else throughout all of my travels and all of my experiences, something that was palpable in this energy. Again, not even having received an energy transmission. Guruji had received instructions from his divine that this was the time to come to the United States for the first time. And Guruji, uh, I don't think felt real comfortable speaking English at that time. So he wanted someone to be a spokesman for him. So he was very interested in meeting Deborah. He, I think his divine told him this is someone to meet. So I rushed, uh, encouraged Deborah, who was also of the same state of mind that I was prior to meeting uh, Gurji, that she wasn't all that interested, but I encouraged her to do so. And we met Gurji and got his blessings. And we developed a relationship, invited him to our home. And he was so gracious, he, he invited us to uh, invite some people over, some friends over to receive his blessings. Uh, the first person we invited over was a friend of ours who was in constant pain, who um, had been in a terrible traffic accident, lived in pain every moment of her life. I remember we had a, we, we lived in a two-story house. I remember we had, a, we had to uh, actually help her up the stairs and she received her energy transmission. And afterwards, she walked down the stairs by herself and her pain was gone entirely. So anyway, we established this relationship, but, but uh, and, and I had in my mind thinking, this is amazing. I, uh, I actually want to go back to, um, and before I go forward, I'm going to go back a little bit here. There, remember I was saying that I was 
uh, at that time I was having questions in my life. What, you know, how did I get here? What is my life about? What is my next step? And I left my home feeling, um, you know, very distraught. And, and yet when I got there, before even going into the room, I felt elevated. And I realized that that was my spirit. Even though I didn't know what I was going to encounter, my spirit did know. And through, just through that, I was being elevated. But I remember having the thought, this is something that is going to change the world. Uh, and I wanted to be able to contribute in whatever possible way I could. I didn't know. And I was watching things happen, the unfold, and nothing seemed to be happening. Guruji was being driven around the country, going to small meetings and in um, in people's homes. They were actually arguing with them and weren't showing him respect. And, and I thought, this is so crazy uh, because what he could do, I could experience was miraculous. And then one day, you know, I, I had the recognition that through Gurji, miracles do happen. I mean, it was, you know, we've all heard that saying, miracles do happen. And I realized miracles really do happen. And I remember sitting with Deborah and thinking, we've got to do something about it. We've got to help kick this thing off. And it was really interesting because I felt it was like this was a moment that kind of like the rest of my life had kind of culminated into this, that we could, we could help launch this thing. Because I have a very strong business background. I went to business. We had all these experiences, both Deborah and I, building spirit, helping spiritual organizations build. We had this contact list from people who in the Chicago area who'd come to see other sp spiritual luminaries in our home. So we decided to send out an email call said, that said, miracles do happen. We invited friends over to our house, expecting a few of them to come over. And people actually opened the email and we had like 100 people, maybe 100 people at our house. And we came, we, we came up with this idea. At, at the time, there was no structure. Gurji, we didn't know charge people. Should we charge people? Should we didn't charge? So we decided arbitrarily to assign a number and we charged people to receive Gurji's blessings to support his activities. At that time, it was a foundation. It was a nonprofit organization. They would help the nonprofit organization by uh, a suggested donation and uh, to receive an energy transmission. And uh, it was amazingly, like a hundred people showed up at our home and we gave them the slideshow, showed them what happened and we invited, and Gurji gave an energy transmission there. And we invited people to sign up for blessings and almost every single one of them did. And then we replicated the same thing. My sister was in Los Angeles and in uh, San Diego area. So we did in Los Angeles, San Diego. And the same thing happened. People would meet Gurji and they'd, they'd see Gurji and they'd receive a taste of what he could offer. And they signed up for blessings. Uh, came back to Chicago and said, all of a sudden we filled up an entire church and 250 people signed up for energy transmissions that week. And we went to Fairfield, Iowa and over a weekend, 250 people signed up for blessings. And it just, it grew like that. Now, the next thing that happened is, you know, I, I mentioned we, this whole thing was kicked off by Jen and Chris Atwood. And it turned out Janice and Chris Atwood uh, also had a mailing list and they, they did a lot of telecasts and or webcasts. I, no, telecasts at times before webcasts. And, and I remember asking Gurji, Gurji, does this work all long distance? Can we do this on the phone? And he says, can we do it with like several hundred people? And, um, and he said, we could do it with a million people and they can be anywhere. So we, we tried doing our first teleconference. And the same thing, we got this um, miracles do happen and, and, Hundreds of people showed up and hundreds more signed up. And that's kind of what kicked it off. And then we just kind of, it grew organically. The divine grew it organically. You know, it's amazing how when there's this fertile energy, the fertile field, anything grows. And we certainly know the field that Guruji generates, that he transmits is fertile. So it just grew amazingly. And, uh, and I have to say one of the, you know, one of the things I'm grateful is that many changes have transformed in my life. I want to share one quick story when I really recognize, you know, when I receive energy transmissions, I don't always experiencing lights flashing or necessarily anything profound. But where the profoundness shows up has been in my life. I noticed the effect. And that was not great. I mean, it's one thing to have some great flashy experience. 
But it's quite another thing to have your life transformed because that's what we're doing this for, for changing life, not just for some great experience. We want a great experience, we can take a drug. <clears throat> but this is something that impacted my life. But I remember um, going, we were going to travel somewhere um, to, to speak on behalf of Guruji. And I remember I'd forgotten my credit, my wallet or some of that. And we had to rush back home. And I remember having to run into the house. And at this time, I'm getting up in age, I have this tremendous arthritis in my knees. And I bemoaned the fact that I couldn't walk very well or even run very well. And all of a sudden, I found myself running back to the car. I'm running back to the house and my knees didn't hurt. For the first time in many, many years, I realized that, you know, my physiology had been had dramatically changed as a result of Gurdjieff's blessings. So um, I want to say, um, again, it's been a tremendous blessing in my life. Uh, uh, many changes have, transpor have, have uh, transformed my life. Um, I no longer in the marriage that I was in, which which had run its course. It was a wonderful marriage, but it run its course. And now I'm married, found the love of my life, married to the woman that I love. Um, I have, I'm happy. I, I want to say this one thing. One thing, besides the tremendous energy that transformed my life, Gurdjieff's message really transformed my life. He, I remember back in the early days, he talked about happiness. And he had a unique definition of happiness. And his definition of happiness was that happiness is what people experience when they are living in accordance with their purpose, as they're, they're living their purpose in life as determined by the divine. And what this energy did is put us in resonance with our, our purpose in life, our life purpose as determined by the divine. And I really feel that's what I think the happiness that I experienced in my life comes from that. That energy is really, I really feel the divine grace and I feel closer to, to God, to that inner spirit, uh, that uh, inner GPS that we all have. And has really taken me out of, out of a direction that wasn't really, I, I seem for some reason, I, I can't discern it intellectually, but I wasn't really going in direction was in, in accordance with um, my purpose in life is determined by the divine. And what Gurji's energy and my relationship with Gurji has done is bring me more in line with my life purpose is determined by the divine.